has the world's fourth longest coastline, and lives here are deeply connected to the seas. Seafood is a staple in most Filipinos' diets. In this episode of CNA Correspondent, we find out what could be done to sustain this. We start by looking at the stars of Philippine marine life and their ecological value to the seas. They make their way to the sea like their lives depend on it. And not many will survive. Only about one in a thousand sea turtles reach adulthood. Catching their journey is a rare experience, even though I grew up five minutes from the coast. To repopulate endangered sea turtles, hatcheries like this gather eggs found on shore and wait for hatching. Five out of seven marine turtle species are found in the Philippines. They are habitats and protectors of smaller species, conduits of nutrients, and regulators of seagrass overgrowth, while also serving as a marvel to underwater enthusiasts. The Philippines is part of the so-called Coral Triangle, or the Amazon of the seas. It has over 2.5 million hectares of coral reefs. Its waters are teeming with stars of marine life. But scientists say a focus on protecting individual species will not work. And instead, entire areas need to be conserved. Marine areas accorded protection include core zones where fishing is banned and buffer zones where only low-impact fishing is allowed, such as the use of a hook and a single line. There are also towns that impose fishing bans for certain months. Those who patrol these areas say the measures allow marine species to breed and restore their populations. Nung magkaroon po ng marine protected area, ay nagkakaroon po tayo ng pangitlugan ng atin pong mga isda na yun po ay kailangang uh, dumami para mahuli po ng ating mga isda. So kung sobra na po ang ating isda sa loob ng santuary, fish santuary, uh, lumalabas po sila doon para yun po ang hulihin ng ating uh, mga isda. Sanctuary guards and sea patrollers are trained to monitor activities that are considered hazardous, including dynamite fishing and the harvest of protected species. Before becoming a sanctuary guard, fisherman Franco Gonzalez felt restricted by all these rules. Nung una, nung hindi ko pa ito alam, parang hinisip ko, bakit talaga nang ganyan? Eh, paano nang maghanap buhay? Nang marilis ko sa ngayon, okay pala. Para mapangalagaan yung ating karagatan, Tapos magkaroon ng pang darating ng mga araw, baka hindi maubos ang yaman dagat. Members of the community, like Franco, benefit from the conservation of marine areas. That's why they've stood up against human encroachment. Infrastructure development comes with a cost, and often it is nature that bears the brunt of that cost. But in this village, ocean-loving members of the community opposed and successfully halted the construction of a seawall in this very area where we are, which conservationists have identified as a nesting ground for marine turtles. But guarding the seas has its dangers. Filipino Sea Patroller Menchi Alpajora was gunned down in 2015. I speak to her friend and fellow Sea Patroller Suzette Villano. She tells me Menchi, before her death, confided to her a series of harassment incidents by violators. Tingin niyo po ba yung dagat, yung kalikasan? Kailangan ng mga taong tulad ni Ma'am Menchi. At bakit po? Sa so, tingin ko, Ma'am, kailangan. Pero siguro po, kailangan din ang proteksyon ng mga tao sa taas. Yung mga katulad ni Menchi. Kasi, katulad nung nangyari sa kanya, so, nung mangyari sa kanya, parang tinanungan namin, nasa anay, hindi dapat magpuprotekta sa kanya. Sa kalagayan po, eh, para din ako ni Menchi. Para din talaga ako ni Menchi. Eh, parang 
bigla lang, bigla naisip ko tuloy ng si Mayne Chick. Bigla, parang nasa puder ako ni Mayne Chick ngayon. Kasi ako nga po sa mga infancy, maraming, maraming pa rin kami mga problema sa dagat na hindi namin, ano-ano, kung kami lang, Siyempre kung kami lang na mag-aalas sa mga pinagbabawal pero kung wala naman mga mag-protecta sa amin, parang, kumbaga, yung, yung advocacy yan ang tulad ni Benji, nasasayang, yung malasakit sa, ano, yung malasakit sa karagatan, parang nasasayang din, parang mamamag, katulad kay Benji. Ganun. So Set says sea patrollers need to be provided life insurance and support from law enforcement. But even as sea patrollers guard marine protected areas, just a single tragedy at sea can roll back progress made. As in the case of this life-altering oil spill off the eastern coast of the Philippines' Mindoro Island. I head to Ground Zero, where oil has been leaking from a sunken tanker. We're here in the middle of the ocean, near the vicinity of the sunken vessel called Empty Princess Empress that caused a massive oil spill off the coast of Mindoro Island. And we are told we cannot go near uh, the site. We have to be at least three nautical miles away from it. Now, we are told by boatmen that this is a fishing ground. And All right, there's a wave coming. And fishermen we spoke to say this is a fishing ground for them that yields them a variety of fish catch, around 100 kilograms per trip. But now it's just the site of cleanup operations and they don't know how long that's going to be. Even from our boat, outsized by the ships in charge of offshore cleanup, we can smell and see the slick of fuel. The waters here have a glossiness to them. The spill occurred dangerously close to the Verde Island Passage, or VIP, a Philippine Strait dubbed as the global center of marine shorefish biodiversity. But even before the oil spill, a group called Protect VIP has been calling for oil tanker traffic to be rerouted away from VIP. So what is at stake is the very rich biodiversity that we have. Two million fisher folks depend on this marine biodiversity area as a source for their livelihood. They say Philippine legislation on ocean conservation needs streamlining and proper enforcement, often not realized until the next big crisis at sea. celebration on land for a beloved creature underwater. A yearly Thanksgiving for whale sharks, locally known as Butanding. Wildlife tourism, specifically whale shark watching, has brought good fortune to the locals here in Dosol town, near the southeastern tip of the Philippines' main island of Luzon. People the world over flock to this coastal town to get a glimpse of the gentle giants. The endangered whale shark is considered the world's largest fish and can grow as big as a bus. Before attempting a sighting, I meet with conservationist Titus Canyere. What makes them important to our oceans? They're filter feeders. It means they eat small food in the surface of the water, plankton, small fish, copepods. And when they eat these foods, um, basically the energy is transferred from those small food to the whale shark. And when they defecate or when they poop it out, it gets passed on to the next levels of the food web. Uh, we call this nutrient cycling. And it's a very important part of um, maintaining the balance in the marine ecosystem. So they kind of make our oceans more productive? Yes, exactly. 
So if you take the whale shark out, you also affect the whole web. What makes Don Sol's whale shark interaction good, in a sense, is that number one is is based off of a natural aggregation of whale sharks. So the whale sharks here naturally come here to feed, and the tourism is built around that. Um, secondly, uh, there is a local ordinance here in Don Sol that provides the basic guidelines when it comes to the interaction of the whale shark. So these include uh, no touching, the minimum distance, the maximum number of people and boats that can stay with a single shark. Don Sol is dubbed a model of sustainable wildlife tourism, but its success has not been replicated elsewhere in the country. In the notorious town of Oslob, in Cebu, for instance, these marine animals are touched and fed by visitors and locals, disrupting their natural migration patterns. Ako po yung tinatawag na BIO. Ang ibig sabihin po ng BIO is Utanding Enter Action Officer. And also, I'm your safety officer. At the whale shark encounter boat, two of the crew act as boatmen while another acts as a spotter. Sightings of whale sharks are not promised in Don Sol, as they depend on the whale shark's natural movement. But with a group of tourists here, I got to swim with whale sharks. They showed up for us. I couldn't help but notice the animals that use them as protection and habitat. The whale sharks we saw are estimated to be just a few years old. But these creatures can reach up to 100 years old. Their migration from one area or even country to another can make the waters more productive through their excrement. Sol based researchers conduct photo identification of the whale sharks to determine their remaining population and migratory patterns. We take ideally the left side of the whale shark from the fifth gill slit to the start of the dorsal fin and this is the sweet spot which we use for identification because the whale sharks have unique spot patterns so we use this as kind of the fingerprint of the whale shark. The people of Don Sol know protecting the whale sharks requires the conservation of their habitats. This includes caring for surrounding areas that help enrich marine biodiversity, such as mangrove forests, so they have regular planting activities. WWF Philippines works with Don Sol's local government to design and enforce its model of sustainable wildlife tourism and also to manage its marine protected area. Some local government units are establishing marine protected area but only to comply with our national uh, government. But after complying, they don't have good plans to manage and to protect their respective marine protected area. The continuity of marine protected plans in Philippine localities is a challenge. That's because the local officials have shorter terms lasting just three years compared to six years for national officials. Budget and lack of expertise are other common issues in conserving these areas. In the Philippines, the designation of marine protected areas could involve national legislation, which would open up funding from the national coffers. Alternatively, a locality could declare its own marine protected area. But this tends to receive less funding as localities have more limited revenue sources. National and local protection can overlap, as in the case of one area near Don Sol.
The Tikal Burias Pass is a two-hour boat ride away from Donso. Underwater, strong currents welcome divers. Against the backdrop of the deep blue waters, a whale shark showed up again for us. And here, you really feel like a visitor to its habitat. But threats to its habitat are growing, despite the efforts to protect these creatures. Volunteers from Don Sol hold regular underwater cleanups, and often they find plastic and used clothes stuck in precious coral. My trip here reminded me of just how interconnected the oceans are, and that what happens in one part of the planet or to a single species affects all others. Coastal towns are among the most vulnerable to climate change. And what happens in urban centers can have an outsized impact on them and the marine environment they rely on. Rush hour in Metro Manila means heavy traffic and bustle. As the city expands, parts of Manila have become so congested that there is barely any space in between houses. <laughs> Proponents say land reclamation may help ease the congestion, but it also means the loss of large swaths of marine habitats. 66-year-old Marciano Arcana has been fishing since he was 11. Dredging activities near their fishing grounds started over two years ago. His income, he says, has plummeted to about one-eighth of what it used to be. Moratoriums are now in place on fresh reclamation along Manila Bay and seabed quarrying across the country. But ongoing projects can continue. Even without reclamation, coastal development risks damaging marine habitats. Sediment runoff can smother coral reefs, affect marine life, and hurt livelihoods. As you can see in this community, the houses are just a few meters away from an ongoing construction. And what I've noticed here is that each time heavy machinery drives by, such as a backhoe earlier, you can really feel the ground shaking. Now striking a balance among ensuring community welfare, protecting the environment and addressing infrastructure gaps has always been a challenge in developing economies like the Philippines. 75-year-old Benilda Salcapano sells dried fish for a living. But construction along their coast is slowly creeping into the area where she used to dry fish. Siguro mga tatlong buwan na, na hindi kami nakakapagtuyo. Siyempre po ma'am, dito kami kumikita, andito ang mga nabuhay namin. Eh kung lilipat kami sa ibang lugar, di namin alam kung ano yung magiging buhay namin doon. Pag sa tabing dagat kayo, madali ang hanap buhay. In Batangas City, a place dubbed as the center of gas development in the Philippines, experts say the buildup of plants and their construction along the shore could potentially pollute water systems that eventually flow to the oceans. Accurately assessing their impact is difficult due to the lack of baseline data and natural capital accounting in the area prior to the construction. It would have tremendous impacts to 
uh, Fisher folks based on so many activities, uh, you know, that would um, relegate them to corners in, in the usual municipal waters that they would catch uh, plentiful of uh, fish catch. Batangas City is host not just to gas plants, but also an international port. Fishing is prohibited within a certain distance from the routes of vessels that load and unload cargo. In the 1990s, hundreds of families were displaced due to a reclamation project for that port behind me. Obviously, this piece of infrastructure has contributed significantly to the maritime transport of both people and cargo in a country of over 7,000 islands. But members of the coastal community I spoke to here feel that each time large-scale construction occurs by the coast, the space for them to secure their living narrows down even further. The country's current framework puts a premium on securing environmental compliance certificates, mostly prior to a project. But Batangas fisherman Joseph Barrios hopes public consultation can be done among fishing communities before, during and even after infrastructure development near the coast. Kinakailangan po ito nagkakaroon ng mga public consultation para mas mahusay na nilalatag din po ng ng mga katulad namin ang aming karapatan sa kabuhayan, paninirahan at sa mga epektop. Maging anuman ang proyekto, kailangan nandudoon po kami ng mga magpipresenta para makita o maihayag din namin ang aming saloobin hinggil sa kanilang mga itatayo mga proyekto. As the tide turns, the Philippines also faces a sea of global challenges such as pollution and coral bleaching is a sign of warming oceans. Most Filipinos, like myself, share a bond with the coast. Across the country, each town has a wet market where locally caught seafood is sold. Growing up for me meant regular meals of fried fish and white rice with soy sauce and chili. Around half of animal protein consumed in Filipino diets comes from fish. But with the challenges that Philippine oceans now face, I could not help but wonder for how long.